Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide on Poland for EU4 1.31 Leviathan. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 12% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. So Poland is a nation in Eastern Europe and is actually one of the recommended countries in the 1444 start date. It starts surrounded by some stronger and some weaker neighbors with the HRE being right on its borders and the threat of Muscovy forming Russia in the east as well as the Ottomans in the south. But by using this guide you will ensure a great start for yourself and you will have an easy and fun campaign. And you can even go for the three Polish achievements. So first we're gonna select some rivals, let's pick the Teutonic Order, Denmark and we're not actually gonna pick Hungary or Lithuania so we're gonna pick Bohemia. These are usually the nations you will pick. We don't want to pick Hungary because what we are going to do is ally Austria. And they should be available to ally 90% of the time. We're also going to Royal Mary Brandenburg. Now we're going to go into our estates and summon the Diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're going to give the clergy clerical advisory council. And if you want to convert Lithuania's orthodox provinces later, you should take the clerical ministers and enforced unity of faith privileges as well. I'm also going to give the nobility aristocratic counselors. I'm going to give burghers patronage of the arts twice and I'm gonna give them commercial advisory board. You can also take enforced interfaith dialogue if you wish. Now we're gonna hire some advisors. Take whichever level one guys you have. If you have a morale or a discipline guy of course you can go for it. In my case I'm gonna go for this land maintenance modifier guy. Then we're gonna set Mazovia to siege and it's time to redistribute our armies. So as you know, as Poland, you will very heavily focus on cavalry. For example, in a normal nation, when the combat with it is 20, you would want to have 18k infantry and 2k cavalry or 16k infantry and 4k cavalry in the simplest term. But as Poland, we're actually gonna go much heavier on cavalry. So our 20k stack would be comprised of around 12k infantry and 8k cavalry. So that's how I'm gonna organize my stacks. And we're also gonna Royal Mary Lithuania. And now while you split your armies, it's time to wait around for the PU event over Lithuania, which will also give us a ruler. So we can't really do anything until we get a ruler, since we start in an interregnum. Once a diplomat comes back, you should start royal marrying, allying, and improving relations with Moldavia, which you already guarantee. You should also start currying favors with Austria. And there we go, I just got the successor of Vladislav the third event where we can pick between we need a Jagiellon to get Lithuania as a junior partner or let us appoint a local noble instead. Now I know there are strategies where you go with this option and that can be considered a strong strategy as well but for this guide I am going to take the we need a Jagiellon decision which will make Lithuania our junior partner. And there we go, we trust the same and just like that we are in a PU with Lithuania. And we do have the unique government form elective monarchy which gives us minus one national unrest, plus 25% income from vassals, minus 30 max absolutism and plus 100 government cap. What does this mean? So basically nations which are friendly to us compete to get one of their members of the dynasty on our throne. So you will see soon, <laughs> it'll probably be Austria since we allied them, but we will have a Habsburg and basically all of your heirs will be of different dynasties. This is the unique elective monarchy government type for Poland and the Commonwealth. Although we will want to abolish this when the age of absolutism comes around and I will explain how to do that. And basically now we have a ruler. But the thing is we still can't fight anyone because we actually have truces with most of the nations that we want to fight and it's too early to get into the HRE and we allied Austria too. So now the next thing to wait is build up a couple of troops in this other army. As you can see I've organized this army into 14 with 16 but I am gonna reorder it into 12 with 8 and I'm gonna start building up some troops in my second army of course up until my force limit and I am gonna set Lithuania to siege as well. And now we're basically gonna wait for the event where Moldavia becomes our march or for our truces with the Livonian Order or the Teutonic Order to run out or for Lithuania to get claims on Crimea. They can do this if you set Crimea's land as land of vital interest. So we're gonna go into the show diplomatic feedback section and we're gonna click on some of these provinces right here and perhaps Lithuania will start making claims on them. So now it's time to wait around a bit. So after some time and as long as it's before 1448 I think you will get this event support for Roman 
of Moldavia. And you have some options to pick whether you will help out Roman who wants to become the ruler in Moldavia. And you can pick fund Roman's effort with coin or send soldiers to aid Roman. I'm going to take this option. Don't take this option ever. And now in three days, Moldavia will get the event where they will pick whether they want to remain independent, whether they want to become our march or Hungary's march. Now, in my experience, they will choose Poland about 70% of the time. They'll take Hungary about 20% of the time and they'll choose to remain independent around 10% of the time. So let's wait for three days and see what they pick. If not, honestly, you can just save scum it. And there we go. Roman of Moldavia's invasion. Excellent. They become our march. So now Moldavia is is our subject and let's check their claims they actually don't have any claims on Wallachia right now so we're gonna do the same we're gonna set Wallachia as land of interest and we're gonna hope that Moldavia builds up some claims there now at this point we still can't attack anyone ourselves unless you want to fight Bohemia or Hungary maybe to humiliate them but Austria is gonna protect both of them so that's why I'm not gonna do it but in your case if Hungary doesn't have Austria as an ally at this point you could attack them and take some land or humiliate them but what i'm gonna do is wait for my truces with the crusader states up here to run out or for moldavia to claim some lands in Wallachia or lithuania to claim some lands in crimea so once some of your subjects have built up claims on their neighbors or your truce with the teutons or livonians has run out it's time to declare our first war now in my case moldavia did make a claim on Wallachia, so that's gonna be my first war and i will explain the other wars shortly too but it just happens that in my case this is the first one so set your troops on the border of Wallachia and they will sometimes mothball the fort in Gyurgyu and they usually won't have any strong allies in my case they're only allied to Herzegovina they could ally Bosnia or Serbia or Biz or Albania but sometimes they may be guaranteed by Hungary or the Ottomans now if they're guaranteed by the Ottomans you could still try for the war if they're in a different war like in my case they're at war with Biz right now and even if they were guaranteeing Wallachia I would declare on them if they're guaranteed by Hungary it's no worries at all you can easily beat Hungary but in my case luckily they're only allied to Herzegovina so I am gonna declare war on them but I'm also gonna co-belligerent Herzegovina and you should co-belligerent anyone they're allied to like Bosnia, Serbia, Albania or Biz so I am gonna declare this war and like I said keep an eye out for this fort they usually mothball it now it's time to full siege them as well as their ally. Since you do have at least two subjects at this point, it is time to give the nobility strong duchies. So once you have full sieged Wallachia and their minor ally like Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, Albania or Biz, we are going to separate piece their ally, which we co-belligerent it of course, and we are going to make them our subject and take all their money. And then we're going to full annex Wallachia, but we are going to feed all of them to Moldavia. So just transfer occupation to all of the provinces to Moldavia and then full annex them and take all their money. And just like that, you've grown Moldavia by six provinces and maybe you've acquired another vassal somewhere in this area. Now, in my case, I have Herzegovina. In your case, it may be another of these guys or Byzantium. But what I am going to do is once again, select all the provinces that these guys border as provinces of vital interest so they can start building up some claims on them and once they do we're gonna start expanding them in this region as well but either way if this was your first war now it's time to prepare for the second war which is gonna be against the Livonian order and Lithuania has claims all over here so we're gonna move our troops into position and get ready to declare and like I said now it's time to declare on the Livonian order and feed Lithuania 99% of the time they will be allied to Riga and the Teutonic order so that will make this war annoying since the Teutons have like four four Riga has a level 3 fort, the Livonians have 3 forts, so it's an easy war but pretty annoying and we're gonna focus on knocking out the Teutons and Riga first. So we are gonna declare this war and I am gonna call in Brandenburg just to make it a little bit easier and we're gonna declare this war. When piecing out the Livonian Order's allies, we're just gonna be taking all their money. We are gonna be fighting the Teutons pretty soon since the Danzig event will fire. Now once you full siege them, it's time to piece them out. And here's what we're gonna take. Basically transfer occupation of everything to Lithuania except the province of Goldingen. And we are gonna take Goldingen for ourselves and we're gonna feed Lithuania 
with these five provinces over here. Actually, I'm gonna get this one as well since I haven't occupied it, but I will hand it off to Lithuania immediately. So this one for yourself, this for Lithuania and all their money. We're gonna take these provinces later. We don't want too much aggressive expansion right now since we are gonna be declaring another war very soon. And there we go, Lithuania got these provinces and I am gonna give them this province as well. Now it's time to core this province and get back down south because it's time to declare on whichever nation your vassal over here built a claim on. In my case, Hungary did eat up all of Bosnia and most of Serbia, but thankfully Herzegovina has some claims on Serbia still, so I am going to be declaring on Serbia. By this time, you may have already unlocked Tech 4 and it's time to start building some buildings. As you can see, I've already started building marketplaces in Krakow and Lublin since they do have centers of trade and I also built a church in Krakow but basically keep building marketplaces in high value trade provinces and I'm gonna build the next one in Lviv. For your second government reform you should of course take strength and noble privileges. And just like that, I'm going to be declaring on Serbia. In your case, it may be different. You might have gotten a different vassal over here and you might be declaring on a different nation or you might not have gotten a vassal at all. And that's totally fine. But I am going to be declaring on Serbia right now. Now, once you've full sieged whoever you're fighting over here, you are going to feed them to your first vassal. So in my case, if Serbia was still whole, I would feed almost all of them to Herzegovina, my first vassal. But since Hungary took over a big part of Serbia, in my case, I am going to be vassalizing Serbia so that I can use them for a reconquest war. If this isn't the same in your situation, just feed most of them to your first vassal, whoever you got. If you're lucky, this might happen in your case too. And it's honestly not a problem if they're disloyal. We're just gonna placate once or twice and start improving relations. Since aggressive expansion is pretty high, I am gonna chill for about a year or two before planning my next war. And it's probably gonna be against Hungary at this point, or maybe even Novgorod. Since 10 years have passed since the start of the game, this is the time to start integrating Mazovia. This is because that is one of our first missions which we need to move down this branch of the mission tree. And we're also gonna start building a spy network on Denmark. For your first idea group, I recommend taking influence ideas. I mean, you already know why. We have so many subjects and we're gonna be getting even more subjects and we do need everything that influence ideas provides in order to integrate them, make them stronger, increase our diplo rep and stuff like that. If for some reason you don't like influence ideas and you're like, whatever, I'm just gonna integrate them at full cost, you should take aristocratic ideas for your first idea group. But I do recommend influence and we are gonna be taking aristocratic later. Now, one thing you do need to watch out for when feeding Lithuania, whether it's in the Livonia order and the Russian lands or in the Pontic step right here is that they don't have more than 58 provinces. They start out with 48 and I just gave them 5 over here and now they have 53 so we don't want them to have more than 58 because then we won't be able to form the commonwealth. So they can only get 5 more provinces but the only thing we're going to be feeding them is basically these 4 provinces right here so it's totally fine. Now once 1460 rolls around this event can trigger the Prussian Confederation seeks polar support. Basically what happens is Danzig pops out of the Teutonic Order and this is the opportunity where we can make Danzig our vassal. So what you need to pick in this event is they shall have our old support to battle. And just like that, Danzig is in a war with the Teutons and now they will call us in. And there we go, they just called us in and of course we will accept. Now it's just a matter of beating the Teutons. Uh, I don't think this will be too difficult. Once you integrate Mazovia, of course you should fulfill this mission. So the war just ended and this is the provinces that Danzig took from the Teutons. And of course now we can fulfill the mission, the Prussian Confederation, which will make Danzig our subject. And just like that, even though we integrated Mazovia, we are back to six subjects. In your case, you might have five or you might have seven. Either way, it's time to stabilize for a bit and get ready for our next war. Now that Danzig is out of the way, it's time to declare on Hungary. Now, Hungary and Austria aren't allied anymore. As we can see, I think this happened because Austria has some sort of CB over Hungary. And actually, this does happen quite often. Well, ever since Emperor dropped, I would say it's about a 50-50 chance of them being allied or Austria getting a PO 
over them, whereas about two years ago, it was like a 95% chance that they would be allied or Austria would have a PU over them. Either way, that's why I'm going to take advantage of this situation and you probably will find yourself in a similar situation where they're not allied. And even if they are, you can still beat both of them up and then just ally Austria again. Either way, I'm going to be declaring on Hungary actually with a reconquest for the Serbian course that they took. In your case, you might just be declaring a normal war against them and not a reconquest war. And they are allied to Anhalt and Saxony and they have Croatia as a junior partner but it's nothing we can't deal with and I am gonna be showing you what to take from Hungary if you're not doing a reconquest like me so now that I have enough war score for what I want it's time to peace out Hungary and I just white peace their allies because I wanted to get them out of the way but if you're not doing a reconquest war like me this is what you should take from Hungary basically you should take some of these provinces up here especially the gold mine in Hunt, and you should also take the province of Temesh right here to prevent the Ottomans from attacking Hungary basically closing off Hungary from Ottoman expansion. Or you could even take like four provinces in the middle of Hungary, like these four right here, just to split them in half and make them weaker, as well as preventing the Ottomans from attacking them. And you can take all of their money. But in my case, I'm just gonna feed Serbia all their cores back and I'm gonna give these four provinces right here to my other vassal Herzegovina and take the province of Temesh for myself to prevent the Ottomans from attacking them. And that was my peace deal. Also, if you get the decision to move your capital to Warsaw, you should do it. Now, aggressive expansion is pretty high, at least over here in Carpathia and the Balkans. So it's time to chill for a bit and figure out another route of expansion. In your campaign, you also might encounter something as cursed as this. I actually can ally the Ottomans. Now, depending on your strategic interests, if you can do this, maybe you should. I'm actually not planning on fighting the Ottomans anytime soon, so I am gonna ally them. Keep in mind, and there's a 90% chance this won't happen in your campaign but I just wanted to show how cursed it is. Around this time you will also unlock the Polish Renaissance mission which gives us a nice admin tech discount for 20 years and of course you should take it. You can also get Nicholas Kopernik as a natural scientist and he's a skill 3 production efficiency guy who is 75% cheaper and of course I am gonna employ him. Now it seems that in my case, Lithuania has built a spy network on Novgorod right here in this province. As you can see, I did have these provinces set as provinces of vital interest, so this is what caused them to build the spy network. But in your case, if you don't want to wait around for them to do it, you can just get them in the initial war against the Livonians, so you can build a spy network on Novgorod. Since we do have truces with a lot of nations that we do want to conquer right now, such as Teutons and the Livonians, as well as Hungary and Croatia, I am going to be declaring on Novgorod right now. You might also be doing this in your case or you may be attacking somewhere in Crimea. Either way we're doing all of this until the truces with these nations up here run out and until we get the transfer subject at half cost peace treaty ability. And now that your army is into position, you can declare on Novgorod. In your case, they might be a bit bigger or they might be a bit smaller. Either way, at this point, we're the number two great power and pretty much unstoppable. And now that I've full siege Novgorod, I'm basically going to be taking as much as I can. So I'm going to take these provinces for myself and I'm going to give this province to Lithuania, as well as all their ducats. And now it's back to waiting around. For your first age ability, you should of course take transfer subject at half cost. And now that some time has passed and we've fixed up our armies and manpower, it's time to declare war against Denmark. That's right, so we're gonna be using the claim we got on Gotland earlier through this province right here, which we took from the Livonians. As you can see, I do have a claim on this province. I built it up a couple of years ago and I am going to be declaring war on Denmark. Usually they only have small allies. In my case, they only have Holland and Liege and Holland won't even come. But even if they have a bigger ally, it's honestly not a problem. You should be very strong right now. So we are going to declare on them and I am going to call in Brandenburg just because I can. Now it is going to be pretty annoying fighting in these large areas over here. It's still not a very hard war. For your third government reform, you can pick whichever one you want. Honestly, both are good for Poland. In my case, I'm going to pick Max Promoted Cultures plus two since we will be expanding into a ton of different cultures. But it's no biggie if you pick this one either. For your second idea group, you should take Aristocratic Ideas. This idea group is not very common, but it's one of the best that you can take as Poland, giving you cavalry bonuses, mil tech discount, monthly autonomy change, 30. 3% increase in national manpower, some army tradition stuff, diplomats, merc stuff, and leader siege pips. This is an excellent idea group and you have to take it if you want to complete the winged hussar's achievement. 
once you've basically fully occupied Denmark, Norway and Sweden and you have well at least 60% war score I don't think I can get more since there is no way for me to get to Gotland and you can actually chain a claim onto some other province so you don't have this one as your war goal thanks to the transfer subject age ability which also gives you claims bordering claims so what we are gonna take in this peace deal is well norway thanks to the transfer subject at half cost peace treaty we can take norway for around 78 percent war score even though i have 65 denmark will accept so that is what we are gonna take now if you do manage to get some more war score in this war you can also snatch some provinces from Sweden and give them to Norway so Sweden is smaller later on and you can do the same thing to them. You can also steal them from Denmark. You can't do it right away since you need 115% war score. And now it's time to chill for a year or two and clean up the Teutons and Livonians. And around the 1480s your game should look a little something like this. Basically this will be your realm more or less. You should be near the top of the great powers list and have many many subjects. In my case I have four vassals, a march and a PU in Lithuania. Of course after this point you will continue to expand in the same directions that you were expanding basically full annex Novgorod. Take a little bit of land from Sweden and then snatch them from Denmark just like we did with Norway. Then you can expand into Denmark, push into the Pontic steppe in the hordes right here, push into Muscovy, expand into the Ottomans if you didn't ally them like I did and you will also get some good claims from your missions. Basically once you form the Commonwealth you will also get a restoration of Union CB on Hungary which of course you are gonna take. Now in my case I would take these lands over here and feed them to my subjects and then take Hungary proper for myself. After that you will get a claim on Silesia, you will take it from Bohemia and then you will get a restoration of Union C beyond them, then you'll get them in a PU as well. Moving down this branch gives you some claims in the Balkans on the Ottomans and moving down this branch basically increases your development and stuff like that. For your fourth government reform I recommend taking meritocratic recruitment. For your fifth government reform I recommend taking the legislative say reform which gives you plus one ruler skills in all categories for your sixth one you should take let that say more and for your final one you should take political absolutism for your third idea group i recommend taking economic ideas as this will help boost your economy as poland even more or you could even take trade ideas for your fourth idea group i recommend taking quality ideas this will push even more into your heavy cavalry focus as well as maximizing the quality of your other unit types as well and you do want to build up a navy a bit after that for your non-military idea groups it's your choice but for your military idea groups you should take quantity and offensive once you do reach admin tech 10 you will be be able to form the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth which of course you will do just keep in mind like I said don't feed Poland more than 58 provinces basically I'm just gonna be giving them these three and that's it no more expansion for Lithuania Poland also has three unique achievements Poland can into space which requires you to get max level in all technologies basically you're gonna play till the end of the game then you have the winged hussars which require you to have the winged hussars as your active unit basically this unit right here which you unlock at Miltech 22 and you need to have 50% cavalry combat ability which is easily achievable from the 10% cavalry combat ability from aristocratic ideas, the 33% you get from your national ideas and the other 10% which you will get from quality ideas. And finally there is the one king to rule achievement which requires you to abolish the same. Basically you need to stop being an elective monarchy and you need to become a regular absolute monarchy. Now this is done later in the game and this can be done if you have this privilege active. Basically you will get this event to activate this privilege if you have a ruler which has less than one skill in either category. Like right now I have a 420 so because I have a 0 right here I got the event to get this privilege and you have to take it. You can't not take it. By having this in the age of absolutism you will get the disaster struggle for royal power. Basically you will get an event chain, Polish magnate, rebels will pop up, a ton of them and you need to let them win and enforce their demands in that disaster. Then the elective monarchy will be abolished and you will become a regular monarchy. That's how you get that achievement. And like I said by this point your game should look a little something like this. Honestly Poland is one of the most fun nations in U4 and I definitely recommend for you to play as them and that's where this guide will stop because after this point your game will diverge too much from mine for the guide to be relevant. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you enjoyed this video consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 12% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today and join the discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.